you with this draw. Float that was on it was, well, only good so low in these way they're made. But the water level was up into this piece. And these stupid things, it's not sealed around here. Look cracky here. That's full of water. Just sitting there running out. There's a crack here too. And I don't know what other crowd, there's one there too. So water just running everywhere. And the crimp on the hose was bad too. So it was busy. Gripping over here at the faucet. So I gotta change that. So we're gonna put one of those rubber made on here. We'll take that one that I just fixed. So that's what that pump comes in handy for. That's a cheap, I got it, it was like, I don't know, 16, 18 dollars, 20 bucks from Hobo Freight. It looks a little rusty on the end because my wife used it for something once and it got left in a bucket outside and I didn't know it. And when I found it, the whole thing was in water and had been in water for quite some time. So I got it dried up and I thought, yeah, it's toast. Plugged in and it worked. That's been like four, five, six years ago. The only thing we had to do is the plastic screen that came with it screwed up. So I made me a metal one here not too long ago. The little plastic just got brittle and broke. But the other reason for doing this is, yeah, it should mostly just be lime scale in there, but from the pipe from here, clear in there to the faucet, being empty all summer, turn the water on and it should have got flushed out first and it didn't. That happens. So, I think we're going to switch this trough out for another one just like it. Just happened to have one exactly like it, except it doesn't have the cracks in it. And I'll probably see if I can figure where the cracks are on this and seal it up. Hopefully. In the meantime, we're pumping trough water into the catch basin. While she's sitting on the phone. Uh, cleaned the feed barn this morning, finally. The feeders were not empty, so I had to work around them, but had them loose and moved them, so got the dirt and crap that was at the bottom of the feeders out that way anyway. And we're going to end up separating the calves off the cows this afternoon. At least get the heifer calves off, because they get to get brucellosis tomorrow. And we have one steer calf with horns that we're going to get them knocked off tomorrow. So he'll be in here with them. And then this pen, whatever open cows we have, they'll come in here for at least a few days. Well, till Monday anyway. Depending on what we're going to do. And I don't like having rocks in here because, you know, you walk out in the rocks and step on one sticking up. I can't even hold on to it. And it hurts. Cows step on those out in here and it hurts too because the ground underneath doesn't give. So, oh, hey, that even got cleaned up. Not real clean, but way cleaner than it was. So, yeah, here is why we have this pump. I could be bucketing that and walking over there and dumping it in the catch basin. Or I could be bucketing that. Or I could just tip it over right here and watch all the water go into that bale. I mean, granted, in the winter, when it's raining, yes, the water goes through there. But usually there's enough manure around it that it kind of dams most of it up. So we And we leave a little crap hay in the bottom, so it's a little better. I'm going to let you go because I'm going to tip this trough so we can get it even emptier. Just fixed two float hoses. We do that end on each end. That's just the way Dad's always done it. Never liked the fittings into the floats to begin with. This is our hose press. This is just samplings. These are the pieces we use. 5 8 hose. 
I don't even know what that crimp ring is actually sized for, but that's the size that works. And I got a slug I put in the end of that, so we're not screwing up. And had I done this a minute ago, I could have shown you everything. Instead, you get to watch my arm for a second. That is if we're dealing with a male end, so you're pushing on it. This one up to she says it works. That one's kind of ugly. All I did was press it on a little farther and it didn't. Yeah, well, hook this one up to no, actually, it. that's the one I cut off. Yeah, put this one up to and when I When I pressed it on, it buggered up a little more. This end we just pressed on a little bit more, which put this in the hose farther and you can see it ah, move this a little. Put it in a vise and popped it with a dull chisel to tighten it a little. Yeah, this I just hooked up the wire itself. Yeah. But, I know, I know, camera's drawing into the phone. Then it screws up in my hand. Then you just look everywhere. There, it goes in like that, so it pushes on there. But when we, I'm not going to take this all apart to show you, but that piece hooks there. We'll put it on the hose just past where the barb goes to. And then push the barb into the hose. And I got a cut washer I lay in right here so it can't get any closer. So you can still move it. And say so when this is hooked ah, in here, then you screw that in and it just presses it. The other thing we always use is a little bit of spray silicone makes things go together much nicer and the reason that end I just showed you was buggered up is because uh, it seems I don't have any spray, spray silicone there's usually a couple cans in here but we're out so I tried a little bit of Vaseline when I reset the one and it worked for the barb it did not work for the clamp so yeah this stuff is one of those things that all stays together only thing in that box. Stays together and stays in one spot. And there's my hose supply. There's only enough there to make like three more. But, you know, we usually don't have to remake them. It's just a matter of usually another hose goes bad. So we end up making one to replace it. But one of these calves chewed on it and whatever else so I think she went down to put that one in and the other thing I like about these the barb piece where it's in the nut is heavy it's oh god it's probably pushing an eighth of an inch thick right here where my thumb is where my nail is in there so when it does get cold the regular washing machine hoses they're just a stamped barb. The stuff's, God, I don't know, it ain't even a 30-second thick. It's just hard to the reason it holds up and the reason, you know, it gets sandwiched in. But those things crack before you even get any ice forming, really. We used to fight those things all the time. And these things, we've actually had it get down 15, 20 degrees where I thought, oh, well, so much for those hoses because they didn't get shut off. And we haven't had one break yet. We've had the faucet that was on break, but we haven't had one of them break yet. Because the faucets are usually made too damn thin too, like everything else. Make them cheap so they don't hold up. And sorry, I'm just winging you around. I just wanted to finish talking while I'm putting stuff away. So, more to come. And to wait me. Cleaned it today. Yeah, left the old hay in the bottom. They're going to eat most of that. I shuffled the feeders around so most of the dirt and stuff come out from underneath. and That's pretty much what got shoved off with the manure. And number one made that little pile. That was from... What was left in that pen, those two orphan calves were in. But these ladies are waiting for me to open this. 
What they don't know is there's some sinister stuff going on for them today. After they all come in, I'm going to close it. And I keep stepping on rocks. I don't like having rocks in here. Separate today because I ain't separating in the morning. So after everybody's in and... Of course, there's somebody riding somebody over there, so probably somebody open. Generally end up with one or two. I get out of their way enough, they'll all come in. And once they're all in, shut the gate. And then hope everybody actually came in. I'm reasonably sure they're all up here. I haven't quite decided how I want to separate yet because we need the cows and the heifer calves. We only need one bull calf. I think I already mentioned that. One bull calf has horns. They'll get dehorned tomorrow. Although there's a couple other square heads in here. But we break check the cows first, then Bruce loves us the calves and whatever has horns gets done then. Not as bad if a calf smells a little blood at the chute. But you dehorn something and then try to run cows through. That's no fun at all. And of course, they all stop right at that feeder, so. The rest of them think they can't get in. They're mistaken. They'll all fit. They just gotta keep moving. So, I'll probably call it good with this for the day. Got a couple other clips that are long enough to go with it, I guess. Probably too long by now. So, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe if you haven't. YouTube works in weird ways. I got a comment that one guy's getting all kinds of weird suggestions for what he needs to watch. Because of the title of my video the other day. I guess I need to watch how I title them. I should title them popular things. That way maybe everybody will get to see more. I don't know. Anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. They're separating heifer calves out in what was a clean barn. I swear it's gone easier when there's been more cows in here. Um, I'm to the point where every time I look, all I see is butthole and balls. See? Whole line of them there. I actually did a few minutes ago just find a heifer between two cows at the other end of that feeder after making like two trips around here. And she's over there saying she regrets me cleaning the barn. She's mad because she got poop on her, but you know, it was over the top of my shoes. And then she wants to know if that's everyone. Well, have I made it around the barn yet? No. But I'm gonna say it is. Because bull, bull, bull. Well, steers, they've been banded. Another big boy there. Standing next to a yearling. That's pretty bad, isn't it? Our yearlings really aren't much. I don't know what the heck happened. But I think we're done. Unless we find a pink tag out here tomorrow. We got a cow and a steer out here. We don't need one steer. We do. One got horns. He's getting them knocked off tomorrow. So, oh well, that's good enough. There you got a little extra.